a little bit, I mean, recapture is, uh, tell us a little bit about that. It's like the things, the, the letters and words you have to fill in when you've forgotten your password. Yeah, that nobody that likes. That yeah. nobody likes. Yeah, I get it wrong every damn time. Yeah, it's these letters so that you have you, to type. Could you make them bigger and simpler, please? <laughs> uh, so you, you did that, and, and recapture is a sort of version and addition to capture, right? Mm -hmm. so, and can you just briefly explain why that is different? Yeah, so, so captures are these letters that you have to type. Everybody hates them, sorry. Um, the, bas the basic idea is that you have to type them to prove that you're actually a human and not a computer program but was written to, to submit the form millions of times. Uh, that's the, the original CAPTCHA. I helped invent that maybe, I don't know, 13 years ago or so. Af after some time had passed, um, uh, in about 2005 or so, um, I did a little back of the envelope calculation about how many times one of these was typed everywhere around the world, and it was about 200 million times. So 200 million times somebody typed one of these around the world. So at first I was quite proud of myself. I thought, look at the impact that I've had. Look at all the pain you've yeah. caused. Yeah. That's great. Th then I started feeling bad. <laughs> then you started feeling bad. Then I started bad. feeling bad because, well, not only is it annoying, but also uh, each time somebody types one of these, they waste about 10 seconds of their time. Right. And if you multiply 10 seconds by 200 million, uh, you get that humanity as a whole is wasting about 500,000 hours every day because of this, yeah. uh, so because of me. So, <laughs> and they so could I, be on jelly and they're doing your stuff. Yes, right. exactly. So I started so, feeling bad. <laughs> so then I started thinking, is there any way in which we can use this effort, those 10 seconds, for something that is good, Got that it. is useful? And that's what reCAPTCHA is. With reCAPTCHA, the idea is that while you're typing those letters, not only are you authenticating yourself as a human, but also you're helping to digitize books. And the way that works is there's a lot of there's a lot of projects trying to digitize books, so like Google, for example, has one. And the way it works is you start with a book, then you, um, you scan it. Uh, and scanning a book is like taking a digital photograph of every page of the book. It gives you an image for every page of the book. The next step in the process is that the computer needs to be able to decipher all of the, all the words in, in this picture. The problem is that for older books, the computer cannot read many of the words because they're, they, they look, the, the ink has faded. So what we're doing now is we're taking all the words that the computer cannot recognize and we're getting people to read them for us while they type a CAPTCHA on the internet. So next time you type a CAPTCHA, that, those words are actually words that are coming from a book that the computer could not recognize and the thing you're typing, we're using it to digitize books. So this is a big thing, it's like crowdsourcing, which is a major, That's major what trend. this would be crowdsourcing. And, and yeah. Duolingo fits into that theme as well? Right. In what, in what way? Yeah, so that's my, that's my new project, it's Duolingo. Um, this is, so this one, started, this one started kind of from a different uh, motivation. It was we, we wanted to give uh, free language education for the world. That was that was the idea. So learning a language. There's a funny thing about learning a language. It's it's, it's huge everywhere except the U.S. <laughs> learning a foreign language. Uh, <laughs> so it, but there's there's about 1.2 billion people learning a foreign language. Right. Um, right. We've uh, got English, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. some kind of English. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, the thing. It's, it's, it's 1.2 billion people. Uh, yeah. 800 million of them are first learning English, that's yep. what they're learning, and second, they are of uh, low socioeconomic status. Right. The reason they're right. learning English, in fact, is to get ahead in life. They're, yep. they're essentially poor people learning English so they can get a job. That's, that's the language learning Got market. Uh, but the majority of solutions are, are, for, uh, are paid. And, and yours is free? And what That's is it, the idea. What does it's it do? It's totally free, so but, but the reason it can be free, the reason it can be, uh, you know, the, the way it's financed, is that there's a crowdsourcing effort in there. The, the idea is that while people are learning a language, um, they are helping to translate stuff. So whenever, after, after, you, after we teach you some concept, we say, hey, uh, if you wanna practice what you just learned, uh, can you help us translate this? Yeah. For example, this CNN is one of our clients. So CNN gives us an article. Uh, we give it to our students to help translate it so that they can practice their language. Got it. And then CNN pays us for the translation and our students get free language education in return. That's kind of the idea of this project. Fantastic, really interesting. I mean, looking ahead for 2014, you know, you're, you're deeply embedded in the technology world. What kind of trends do you think are going to be really important in technology, personal technology, next year? Um, I, I, well, I think we're going to be seeing a few things. I think, uh, I'm hoping, I don't think it's next year, but I'm hoping for the self-driving car very soon. I hope it's next year, but great, but <laughs> I'm yeah. hoping, it was really hard to get a cab here. I really, <laughs> they all said I'm not going that way. It's the Christmas tree, I think. Oh, that was yesterday, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping for that. Um, I think that's a big deal. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of, I, I think one of the things we're seeing is a lot more applications that are, that are much more meaningful. So I, I think the, the way I see it is, you know, we started, we started with, uh, you know, the internet uh, was to send email, essentially. Yeah. Uh, then we added kind of pictures to it, that's great. Uh, then, then maybe we even added videos, uh, and there's social networking, et cetera. But over the last year or two, we've started seeing a lot more meaningful um, 
interactions. I mean, people are now, for example, getting an, an entire education uh, online. Right. Um, so with, with companies like Coursera. Yes. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of that. We're just, th you know, not as simple as uh, exchanging text or exchanging messages, but getting entire educations or uh, having entire you know, relationships online, et cetera. Got it. And um, do, do you see that sort of, I mean, it ties a bit with what Biz is saying, is he, he was talking a lot about sort of community and relationships. I mean, w where does crowdsourcing go next and crowdfunding and all this kind of thing? I mean, they seem to have really taken off. Is 2014 a year where they could sort of become really mainstream as opposed to a sort of relative, still a relatively minority activity? Yeah, I believe so. I think there's, I mean, certainly crowdfunding has taken off over the last year or so. Right. Um, there's. Uh, I, we, we were starting to see better things being built with crowdfunding than with the standard funding models in, in some cases, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, but I think also, uh, I, I think there's a lot of different crowdsourcing efforts that we're going to be seeing. Maybe not so much in 2014. I think there's a lot to go right now. The crowdsourcing efforts, for example, things like helping to digitize books. Uh, people are doing relatively simple tasks where you know, typing a CAPTCHA is one example. It's a very simple task. I think we're going to be seeing more and more complex things happen. Mm -hmm. um, so Wikipedia is a really good example. It was an encyclopedia that was built by crowdsourcing. Uh, I think we're we're going to be seeing just m much more complex things. One of the one of the things that uh, some people have talked about is, for example, there are many countries where um, the the police force is not very good. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, it's just think of I don't know. Well, I'm from Guatemala, for example. <laughs> right. The police force. You don't want to call the police. You know, they'll take your stuff. Okay. So, <laughs> so but uh, can you imagine that instead of you know the police force kind of broken, can we actually crowdsource the police? The police. Can can people actually start you know with technology maybe tweeting about it, doing something about it? Can they actually all get together? And, and That's make a very safer interesting. place. You might get flash mobs as well because it works both ways. Yeah. So we, 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 but the, but the nice thing about this is in, even in the most dangerous places in the world, it's only a small fraction of people yes. that are malicious. Yes. So it should be the case that the other 99% should be able to take them if they're actually coordinated. The problem is <laughs> they're not. So can they? Can we coordinate them? You're some kind of scary guy. <laughs> anyway, that's great. You're on my side, right? Um, uh, I don't know what to say to that now. Um, oh, I do know what to say. This. Uh, so can we pay them with Bitcoin? Where's Bitcoin going? You know, this is—is is this some kind of major new movement in digital? Oh, my currency? net worth is in B Bitcoins now. How much have you no, got? No, I'm just kidding. No, I, just, I read that this Chinese teacher who's got like a hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin, really? allegedly. Uh, I don't know how fungible it is, but nevertheless, I, I, is this? I think it's a big. I think now? I think it's big. I, it's unclear that Bitcoin itself. Bitcoin apparently has some, prob you know, some problems with inflation, uh, but I think there's new, there's successors uh, that actually don't have these problems. So right. either Bitcoin or one of its successors is going to be huge. Would you care to tip one of the successors for nah, next year? I don't know. I don't know or which one's on. better. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, so so so, but it will break out. I th I don't know if next year, but I think okay. a a currency like that should break out. It it, it just should. makes sense. I mean, a, a, a currency for the internet just makes sense. Right. Uh, Got it. Um, I'm going to open to the to the floor. Um, questions for Luis. Uh, one here in the middle. Hi, thank you. My name is Karen Kim, brand marketing and the Economist. Um, we see crowdsourcing or crowd. I guess it's a form of crowdsourcing in the news market as well, where people are using intermediaries and aggregators instead of going to traditional media sites. So you know, you go to Google News or you go to any of these other sites in order to get bits and pieces of information, which is a lot like you know the sort of crowdsourcing phenomenon that we see. Um, but the downside of it is that it's less credible and that because it's, it is by a lot of individuals who we don't know, um, we can't guarantee the quality. So uh, how would you respond to, let's say, the CNN articles that are translated by the people who are learning English? How do you um, ensure quality control? Yeah, that's a really good question. That's one of the key aspects of, of crowdsourcing. I mean, I remember when, when Wikipedia came out, everybody, there was this whole thing about the, in the news that oh, you should not trust Wikipedia. Don't trust Wikipedia. Mm. Uh, um, that's right. Then, then this really nice study came out uh, saying that Wikipedia was actually as accurate as Encyclopedia Britannica, which, by the way, I believe stopped printing. It did stop printing. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, so. The, not I, immediately, but soon. I, yeah. So, I, I, I think. I think for certain things you can actually ensure accuracy. Um, right. In the case of our translations, for you know when we translate stuff using students, 
Uh, it turns out that if you get multiple students, one single student is not very good at translating stuff. Uh, but if you get multiple of them uh, and checking each other's work, they're actually quite good. In fact, uh, uh, about 20 students um, are equivalent in accuracy to a single professional translator. Wow. So they, they get, uh, that, that's the idea. But at the same time, uh, I think for some things we can get accuracy, especially in the cases where accuracy is well-defined. Uh, so in the case of translation, it's relatively well-defined. Um, but I think for other things, uh, you know, especially in the news, I think there's a lot of examples. Uh, what was it that, for example, Reddit identified the wrong uh, yeah. Boston bomber, for example. Yeah. That, that was terrible. Uh, and I think we're going we're gonna to be seeing stuff. Um, I mean, I think that's a danger of, of crowdsourcing. Of crowdsourcing, and, and yeah. There's so there's a role for journalists and newspapers still. Thank you. That's I great. So. Don't answer I that question. So. I was, I was no, 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 just say, say yes. Just I say yes. Paid to say um, this, yeah. Other <laughs> questions? One front here. I just checked out your uh, Duolingo. Yes. It's wonderful. And uh, I noticed there weren't really any Asian languages in there. Are you making plans for that? And is it going to be kind of like a wiki where um, in Buffalo, where I'm from, uh, my organization is working with some of the public schools. And uh, we've got a lot of immigrants. Mm -hmm. And they're from places like Burma, uh, mm -hmm. Somalia. And, and there's a lot of times when there's no app for the actual writing. So you, like I do Korean, and I can type it in, since mm -hmm. there's plenty of things available. But would you be like developing not just like a wiki for language, but also a kind of typing system? Because like Go Keyboard doesn't have all those. Yeah, so we're we're actually working on this right now. Um, right now with Duolingo, so we're uh, we have about 15 million uh, users uh, of the languages, but we only have essentially the European languages, and it's not just all your it's not all European languages. It's just the big European languages that we have. Um, we get a lot of requests for all kinds of languages. Um, we and at first I made a little list about the the languages that we were gonna we were gonna add. I said if at least 50 people request a language, we'll add it. So that, that's what I was doing. Uh, but then that list reached like 90 languages. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, I had trouble. Uh, so then what we decided, the good thing is when, when people ask us to add a language, many of them say, actually, I, I'm willing to help you. Uh, because, because you're giving free language education and I believe in what you're doing, I'm willing to help you. So we took that idea and, and we decided to, guess what, crowdsource this. Uh, so we're now, we're, we're now, we just launched a thing maybe two months ago called the Duolingo Language Incubator where basically people can help us add courses to Duolingo. Um, and people have been adding, adding them. The first course to be entirely created by the community and not us will be learning English from Russian. And it will be out, I believe, in a week or two. Uh, so, and, and the, in 2014, I think we're going to see um, almost a ton, more. A, a ton more languages. Yeah. I mean, we're probably Five 50, years. 60 languages. Uh, other qu question over here. Uh, is there, yes, we have a mic. OK, I understand. Oh, my name is Robert Stepanek. I'm with IBR News. Uh, the question uh, relates to, you say you're doing, the, the, with the reCAPTCHA, people are digitizing books. Mm -hmm. So I'm not clear how that is, uh, uh, like, uh, how that's delivering the books into what form or what database they're being delivered. And we've got an issue with you know, Google was trying to digitize all these books. And I happen to be a writer. so. Uh, are the writers of these books or their heirs or whomever being compensated, intellectual property and rights and releases and things like that are of concern? Because a lot of great technology is happening now, but a lot of the profits from the content we want are flowing yeah. to the people okay. creating the apps. Be reasonably brief in the answer. Yeah, so we're for this out. particular one, um, so with reCAPTCHA, what happened is it was, a, it was a company and it was actually purchased by Google. So these, these, are, these are for the Google Books project, but we're only doing the public domain books uh, for reCAPTCHA. So any, anything that's public domain, in the public domain, and it's usually because it's the older books that are difficult to, to scan. Those are also the ones that are in public domain. So these are being done for the public domain. Got it. OK, uh, another question. No, I have one. Um, personal assistants, personal digital, you know, the, the, the Siri that really works and <laughs> knows me and, and anticipates my every want and need. Uh, are these coming, and are they going to be a reality in 20, 2014? Will the AI, artificial intelligence stuff, move forward in fast enough to let us? I, I think these? they're coming. I don't think they're coming in twenty fourteen. Okay. I don't. It will be maybe Siri and a little, a little better than Siri, but I don't think it'll be like your personal assistant that actually works. Damn. <laughs> when, when might we have one? Do you think? <laughs> That's really hard to say. I don't know. Five years from now. Five uh, years. That, that, and it depends also what you want to 
what you, what you wanted to do. I mean, more and more, your phone is becoming your personal assistant. You don't need that's somebody right. to tell you how to get to a place anymore. Your phone will tell you. Correct. Uh, so more and more, I think that's the way it's going to happen. That right. Just more and more, it'll do a few more things and a few more things. Got and it. And are you going to be buying a pair of Google Glass? And <laughs> is that going to? Uh, you know, I have one, and I don't. You don't I, use it? No. That, why not? That's really interesting. I, I, people stared at me too much. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I stopped. I, 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 For the I wrong liked reasons. It. Well, I, I liked like. it. I actually, I liked it. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it, it was. Uh, I, th I think if more people, it's going to be one of those things similar to like the, the you know, the, the, Bluetooth. the Bluetooth thing. Right. The first time I saw somebody like that, they're insane. But now you just see people were talking to themselves, and it's okay. All the time. Uh, yeah. Which is still weird, but it's. But it's okay. okay. So I think right. if, I think if like I don't know five percent of the population is wearing, it's okay. Uh, so I think I think that'll be okay. So we got to get to the five percent point. That's great. Um, <laughs> And drones, because we had a qu quick discussion about drones. Are you, are you <laughs> do, do you have one? Of no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just checking. Um, and do you think drones are going to be personal sort of drones, are going to be something that will be big? And is well, that that's a good question. I don't know anything about that, but I would say not in 2014. Okay. Uh, but I would, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in, I was interested in the announcement that Amazon did. I want my, my stuff immediately. Right. That's, uh, but Interesting. <laughs> okay, so um, we have following this session uh, David Blaine, and I'm told that if I don't finish on time, he's going to make me disappear. <laughs> so therefore, or put me in a block of ice, which would be even worse. So I think we're uh, finished. Ladies and gentlemen, please would you thank Luis Von Arn. Thank you. You're terrific. All right, thank you.